Hey, welcome again to Books on World Mythology. Today we're going to talk about Arthurian mythology. Uh, Arthurian mythology falls under more legend. And uh, 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 to start off with, uh, King Arthur is, 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 uh, is complex because uh, we know very little as to what happened to cause the, the, the cycle of legends that surround King Arthur. Uh, you know, after Rome pulled out of Great Britain, uh, Great Britain was open to being attacked by various tribes, especially Germanic tribes. And uh, there may have been some warlord who lived there and kept, uh, kept these Germanic tribes out. And uh, it led to a, a time of peace. And uh, it, that may have given rise, but that's just one opinion. That may have given rise to Arthurian legend, but that's just one opinion. Uh, there's actually, uh, as time went by, the story of whatever happened, uh, there was uh, some old sources sometimes mentioned Baden Hill as some site uh, that a victory took place. So that that that's the kernel. That's one of the kernels of Arthurian myth. Myth, and then as time went by, his legend grew and grew and grew, until finally you had some architects early in the 12th century who really put together the story and made it really big. Uh, one of these uh, one of these architects of Arthurian myth is this guy, Geoffrey of Monmouth. And in Latin, he wrote this book, and it's called The History of the Kings of Britain. And so this is a Penguin classic version, and this book is absolutely wild. Uh, you have some... It, it actually precedes the romance uh, literature a little bit. I don't think this book is considered romance. Romance is a, is a, is a type of Hutherian literature where it follows a certain formula. This is a little different. Uh, it's actually somewhat of a pseudo history. There's a very few facts, but he, you know, Jeffrey of Monmouth treated this as some sort of uh, oh wonderful history of of the of the of the kings of Britain. But a lot of it is kind of. Uh, of his own imagination, legends, but but a lot of it deals. Uh, it, it it goes before Arthur. It goes after Arthur. It it, it starts off with uh, uh, Brutus, who was uh, somebody who was in the Trojan War, and and he sailed up to Great Britain and fought off some giants and founded Great Britain, and uh, uh, and uh, then come the stories of King Arthur. Merlin's in here. Uh, his, uh, the the Knights of the Round Table are in here. So this is like one of the great. Uh, books that put together the architecture of the uh, of the Arthurian myth. Another another book that put together uh, that played a big role in putting together the myth of King Arthur is this book by a Norman writer, a French Norman writer named Wace, and he wrote something called the Arthurian Chronicles, Roman de Brut. Now this is a, this is an unusual copy. Uh, uh, there's old copies that you could buy, but this one I, uh, I, de I actually had. I, there's a store I go to in New York City that actually prints, literally prints for you in front of your eyes, old out of print books. And uh, uh, so they printed this book for me. But fear not, you know, you could. Uh, th th there's free versions of this book on Kindle and iBooks and everything. So, uh, but but this this book this book sometimes is grouped with another another book. Uh, in old in old editions, there's a book that's simply called Arthurian Chronicles, Roman de Brut by Wace, and another book that's also called Brut. B R U T, just like Roman de Brut, by another writer named Leamen, L A Y A M O N. Now, I don't have a physical copy of that. I read a downloaded version, but sometimes they're grouped together as far, and it's called Arthurian Chronicles. And uh, both stories are very similar. They follow a lot of details. You have Vortigern, who uh, betrayed the early king of. Of, of Great Britain, and he allowed uh, Germanic tribes to, to, to come in, and he totally lost control of, 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 of them, and they took over Great Britain, and, and eventually he was toppled by Uther Pendragon, who was the father of King Arthur, and then King Arthur rises to power, and he conquers so much of Europe, and uh, you have the early heroes of the Round Table mentioned, so this is a, a great book that, uh, this book along with Leoman, Leoman's book, Brute, puts together a lot of the architecture of the Arthurian myth. Okay, now we're ready for what's called romance. The architect, the great architect of uh, Arthurian romance is a guy named uh, Cretion. Okay, here's one of his books right here. Cretion du Trois. Uh, my French is a 
is abysmal. I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. I just call him Chrétien. And, uh, and he wrote, uh, he wrote in French. Uh, it's amazing how so many of, uh, so much of Arthurian literature, even though we think of it as England and Great Britain, so much of it is written in French and other languages. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this book by Monmouth was, was written in Latin. This book was written in French. The one of the earliest books, if not, I believe, the earliest book on that really tells uh, the full story of King Arthur. That's written in English. Is Layamon's version of of the story, the Brute by Layamon, is the oldest English version. Now, when it comes to the romances, the oldest is is uh, is is French, you know, in giving in terms of giving us a romance. Uh, but Chrétien wrote in the in in the late 12th century, and he's the guy who's the great architect of Arthurian romance. And what he did, instead of giving us a very long narrative of King Arthur, his predecessors, King Arthur's rise to power, his fall, he doesn't do that. He basically gives us five books, five French poems that center on one of the night of the one of the nights of the round table and he gives us five stories each centered on one night and they are amazing stories one of them is this book Eric and Enid and this this particular version is translated by Gilbert and this is a great story this is this is a story of a guy who marries a, a brave knight who marries a beautiful woman but the woman uh, the woman seems to ha what happens after he marries her uh, he gets lazy and people start talking behind his back and he overhears his wife say, oh, my poor husband, people are talking about him. And then he, gets, he takes it out on his wife and, and uh, him and his wife go, go on adventures where he, doesn't, he purposely doesn't talk to her. And he goes on these horrible adventures where he's always wounded a lot and he, he's made to make his wife, he makes his wife watch the battles and her not doing anything to kind of put it through some sort of penance to show that he's still brave. I know it sounds kind of cruel, but it gets nicer at the end. Uh, another book he wrote was this one uh, called Cligé. Cligé. Uh, I, I read this book actually twice in two different versions, and I still forget what it's about. Uh, this translation is by Burton Raffle. Uh, okay, I'm not going to talk about that one. Uh, another one is... is uh, his his Lancelot, okay, or the Knight with the Cart is a subtitle, and this translation the next three the next three translations are by this this writer Klein Ruth Hayward Klein, and the next three books I'm going to talk about is all from her wonderful translations. And this story is this is the oldest version of the love affair between Lancelot and Queen Guinevere. It's in this book in in the Lancelot. It precedes all other. All other books about that, and this is a great story. How he has to rescue Guinevere because she's kidnapped, and he goes through all kinds of trials, including humiliating himself by being driven in a cart, which is usually what what you know condemned prisoners are carried around. And uh, then there's another book, which is my personal favorite, Evane or the Knight with the Lion, again translated by Klein. And this is a story of a guy who enters an enchanted land and saves a damn soul but then he then he forgets her and she comes back and yells at him you know you bastard you forgot about me and then he goes through a type of penance where he goes wandering in a forest where he goes crazy for a while a lot of Arthurian heroes go crazy for a while and wander in forests and he and but then he gets his sanity back and he becomes friends with a lion sounds crazy and it is kind of crazy but what a great story this is this is my personal favorite Arthurian story and the fifth and last book that Cretion wrote was this one you know this one, Percival, or The Story of the Grail, by translated by Klein. Uh, and this story is, is, is the oldest, the oldest version of the Grail story. Now, the reason why the Grail is such a mysterious object is because the guy died before he finished it, the bastard. He, he died. We don't know exactly what the Grail is. In this version, it seems to be some sort of bowl. Uh, in other versions, it's other things. Uh, but he, but Cretion died before he, he finished this book, unfortunately. Uh, you know, but but it's still a great, great, great story. And uh, 
yeah, so that's it. Now, I know this seems like a lot of books, these five books that I just mentioned, and it seems like a big cost and everything, but fear not, there are editions that have all books, all five books by Kration in one tidy little volume, and this is one example. It's put out by Everyman Libraries, and see, Kration du Dois, du Trois, Arthurian Romances, and this, uh, including the Percival, of course, and this translation is by D.D.R. Owen, and it's put out by Everyman, and this one simple uh, affordable book has all five romances and it's a, it's a prose translation but it reads so well you know if you're not picky about having to read it in verse so all five Arthurian romances so this is a must to have to to really realize what uh, what it is to read early Arthurian romance now if you're upset that uh Cretion died before finishing his Percival and the story of the grail uh now don't worry because there's a German writer named Wolfram von Eschenbach and he wrote something called Parsifal, or the way it's spelled looks like Parsifal, but I believe it's pronounced Parsifal. And uh, this translation is by Hato, okay, and it's put out by Penguin. Now, this is the German version of Kration's story of Percival. Uh, and he lived to finish the, to finish the story. So this story is, is complete. It has an ending. Uh, it, ta it, it follows a lot of... Uh, Kration's story, and it continues all the way to a glorious finale. And uh, so, if you like the Grail story, then you got to read this one. Okay. Now, now I'm going to mention something else. Uh, these five romances have become so popular that there's other translations in Europe. Uh, there's a there's a German writer named Hartmann von All. Okay, and he gave us a German version of the Eric story, Eric by Hartmann von Orr, and this translation is by Resler. This follows the same storyline as Eric and Enid, but it's it's a German translation, and uh, I read it anyway, even though I know the story because I want to. I, I really like this story, and sometimes different you know different versions have you know some details that are different, and also my favorite story. Evain or the Knight with the Lion. There's a German version of that by Hartmann von Orr. The the Knight, the Knight with the Lion. Uh, it's spelled differently instead of Evain. Well, it's spelled with a W here. And uh, and this is wonderful. This is the, this translation is by J. W. Thomas. And and again, if you really like that story, uh, this is the this is an English translation of a German version of that story. Now, I'm going to mention another book that. Uh, that has to do with Arthurian romances. Um, I mentioned this book in the previous uh, previous video I did on Celtic mythology called the Mabinogion, and so the Mabinogion has many has has uh, eleven stories. Of some translations have a twelfth, but uh, but the reason why I mention this is because several stories here uh, are the Welsh versions of the Arthurian stories. Three of them are the same as the uh, the. Uh, uh, the Cretion stories. There's there's a story of Eric, although here he's called Geraint. There's a story of Evain. He's called Owen or Owain here. And there's a story of uh, oh, what's the oh and uh, Percival, which he's called Peridur here. Um, uh, and uh, uh, yeah, so I was going to say something, but never mind. Uh, yeah, but. Those stories are well are, are well told, but the real interesting story in here is another Arthurian story. Well, there's one called Dream of Ronabry, which is pretty good. But the real amazing Arthurian story in here is called Killhook and Olwen. Killhook and Olwen. And uh, uh, what's what's absolutely amazing about the story of Killhook and Olwen is that it it, it really gets into it. Really sounds like a a, a, a pig. It, it's not a it, it, it doesn't fit the same as the romances of other of, of the other books I've mentioned. It's it's a it's a very uh, it's it's almost a, an early pagan story where King Arthur and his knights they they don't feel mortal. They 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 they're like the damn Avengers. They they each have a special ability that that and they help Killhook uh, win the hand of Olwen from this evil greedy giant named Ispathaddon, and and he has to rescue her from him because he refuses anybody to marry her. You'll find out why later. He won't allow anybody to marry him. It's actually a winter spring story, believe it or not. It, it's an allegory of winter and spring, and uh, Killhook is the hero, and he enlists the aid of King Arthur, King Arthur's men. But like I said, the King Arthur's men are very godlike. And it's funny because the Mabinogian is believed to be 
the remnant of pagan whales where the figures in here are, are very godlike. So if you want to read King, a King Arthur story where they seem more like powerful Avengers or gods, you got to read this story. The story is Killhook and Olwen, spelled with a C. Uh, and uh, yeah, anyway, okay. Now, another book that you have to read, it was written around the 1300s, that is an absolute must. It's it's a beautiful story. It's Sir Gawain and the Green Knights. Uh, this translation is by Burton Raffle. It's uh, no, sorry. Uh, oh yeah, Burton Raffle. Sorry, I was working at the wrong author. It's a short. It's not a very long story. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, medieval poem. It's basically the the figure in the in, in, in the figure in the in the in the front is. Uh, uh, is 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 the knight Gawain, and uh, and here Gawain isn't the the rather you know uh, the rather unlikable later figure as he's portrayed in Arthurian literature. He's uh, he's 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 actually the the gentle, great, virtuous, chivalrous knight that he was originally uh, before Lancelot and Galahad took that away from him. Uh, so uh, so basically, it's the story of you know. Uh, it, 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 he there's a giant that shows up in King Arthur's court, and he demands that you can cut my head off today. If I can cut off your head a year from now, and nobody takes him up on it except for Gawain, it turns out after he cuts the the the, the giant's head off, the giant gets up, grabs his head, and holds it out to Gawain and says, "Now you got to come to me a year later, and you got to come to me in the spot." And Gawain now he feels doomed, but he's honorable. He has to go a year later and he travels to get his head cut off amazing story and has an amazing ending beautiful beautiful story okay now i'm going to talk about uh what happens that there's a series of, of french literature that happened after Chrétien. Chrétien wrote in the 12th century and there's literature that happened after Chrétien uh that occurred uh in the next century a, a series of french uh, writings that's called the Vulgate King Arthur. It's a, it's, a, it's a bunch of books that's part of a cycle called Vulgate. And I have, there's several, but I have two of them. One of them is called The Quest of the Holy Grail. And this is a Penguin edition, and it's translated by Mato Rosso. And it's put out by Penguin. Now, this, this Quest of the Holy Grail is uh, very different than the Holy Grail story I read earlier, where, uh, uh, the, the main hero is Percival. This is this is the version that introduces Galahad. Okay, now if you're wondering, well, I sometimes I hear it's Percival, sometimes I hear it's Galahad as the Grail hero. Well, the earlier story is Percival, but Percival is seen as kind of uh, uh, kind of clumsy and 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 not exactly uh, chivalrous at first, and he's kind of crude and in order to be a grail hero you have to be pristine and be a virgin and all that amazing stuff so they invented galahad uh, but but galahad is not two-dimensional he's actually got some depth depth and this is a great 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 story of the quest of the holy grail this book sort of molds the the grail story closer to the, we think when we think of the holy grail the other the other book i'm going to mention that's part of the vulgate cycle is this put out by penguin the death of uh, Le Mort Arthur, not Le Mort d'Arthur by Sir Thomas Mallory, but uh, another death of King Arthur called the death of King Arthur. And this is translated by James Cable. And this is a, uh, this is again, another story of the decline of the, of, 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 of the, of, of King Arthur and, and, and the death and, and how the knights fought with each other and everything went to, went to crap. And uh, it's a sad story, but if you're looking for a slightly different version that you usually get from Sir Thomas Mallory, uh, then this is the this is the book for you, okay. Now, now we're gonna now we're gonna finally get to Mallory. You're probably wondering when does that guy finally come up? Okay, so Thomas Mallory, La Morte d'Arthur, uh, uh, and uh, the version I have is by Penguin, and it's Volume One and Two. And uh, yeah, so La Morte d'Arthur is is that great masterpiece. It's very big. It's about a thousand pages long, at least in this version. And it's by Sir Thomas Mallory, who was a knight. He wrote it around the 1400s, and he uh, I think he wrote it in prison. Now this is the be all and end all of King Arthur literature. I mean, you got everything in here. You got Lancelot's love affair with Guinevere. You got you got uh, uh, 
you got the rise of, of King Arthur, you got the sword and the stone, you got the quest for the Holy Grail, you got the, the rivalry between Gawain and Lancelot after the love affair is found out. You got Morgan Le Fay, who's constantly a, a, a thorn in the side of King Arthur. That's all here. Okay? Uh, so, got to read it if you want the full picture. Although, tell you the truth, I like the earlier romances. I mean, this stuff is great, but give me Kration. Give me Sir Gawain and the Green Knight. That's my favorite stuff. Now, I'm going to mention one more book. Well, second to last book. Uh, a, a very modern take of King Arthur is, probably had to read it in school, was Alfred Lord Tennyson's Idols of the King. At first I resisted reading this because I thought it was too recent. And I'm like, oh, it's not old. It's pretty recent. But you know what? It's beautiful. It really is. The poetry is absolutely amazing. If you've read so much King Arthur and, and you want to try something a little more modern, Alfred Lord Tennyson's Idols of the King is actually a nice addition to your collection after you've read all the other stuff. And one more book I'm going to read. You've read so much of the literature and now you want to read a book on a little interpretation of King Arthur. Uh, you know, a little bit about uh, about the story, about its evolution, about its meaning. You probably can't do much worse than Richard Cavendish's King Arthur and the Grail, and the subtitle "The Arthurian Legends and Their Meaning" by Cavendish. This is a this is a wonderful little book. Uh, I read it many years ago. It's not too thick, and it is just a lot, a lot of fun. It sheds a lot of light on on King Arthur, his knights, uh, how the story evolved, how he started off as a, a rather Celtic king or Romano-Celtic king and how he evolved into an English English king uh, and all stuff like that. So I, I put that at the end. So sorry this video is a little long, a lot of literature on author, and you know what? There's still some out there that I haven't read. Uh, okay, so until next time, happy reading.